I want to say welcome again and happy Mother's Day. We're in a series we're calling the, the question no one's asking, but we're hoping it's the question that everyone begins to ask. At every stage of your life, we hope you'll ask the question because at every stage of your life, the answer you may get will be a tad bit different. And someone uh, just yesterday told me, hey, I know what you need to do. You can make tomorrow's lesson about Mother's Day just by saying this one truth. If you're ever in doubt about what to do, just listen to your mama. And that will be the thing to do. So for all of you out there on Mother's Day, when you're wondering what's the wise thing to do, listen to your mama or your mama, as they said yesterday. You know, as we said in the past, it's a question to ask before every decision, before every opportunity, before every choice. It's the question that has the potential to save you a lot of time, to save you a lot of money. It's the potential that uh, could really save a relationship, could save a marriage, could keep a child from leaving or even coming back home. It's a question that could help you retire on time. We begin with the words of Paul from the book of Ephesians where he talking to the Christians who were meeting in Ephesus said these words, be very careful then how you live not as unwise, but wise, making the most of every opportunity. Paul says, do you want to get the most out of life? Do you want to go as far as you can go? Then I'm going to encourage you to live as wise in a world that's trying to make you make unwise decision and here, decisions. And here's the question that we said that is the most important question to ask. What is the wise thing to do? If Paul says live as wise, then maybe it would... Uh, behoove me to ask, well, what is the wise thing to do? What is the wise thing to do? Not the legal thing to do. Most of us already know the legal thing to do. Not even the right thing to do. Right wants to draw lines and be as close to the line as we can get. This is better than right. Not even what can I get by with. Not even get this. Not even what would Jesus do? <laughs> because most of us like legal. We already know what Jesus would do. Those are good questions, but this question is better. What is the wise thing to do? And we ask you to ask that question in light of three situations or three timelines in your life. The first was the past. In light of your past experience, in light of what you have gone through in life, because your past is not my past, my past isn't your past. And there will be things in our past that should influence how we act today. We said, ask the question, what is the wise thing to do in light of your cir current circumstances? I just got a new job. What's the wise thing to do? I just graduated. What's the wise thing to do? I just, you know, had a new child. What is the wise thing to do? And then we said, you should ask this in light of your future hopes and dreams. What is the wise thing to do? in light of the person that I want to marry one day? What is the wise thing to do in light of what I want to tell my kids one day? What is the wise thing to do in light of what I have struggled with in my past looking at my future? What's the wise thing, not for everyone, but what's the wise thing for me to do? We started last week in the book of Proverbs because uh, Solomon, who said to be the wisest man who ever lived, had a lot to say about wisdom. And in Proverbs, particularly in chapter one, which we're going to get to by the end of the message today, he says there are really four types of people. And I've got them yesterday. Uh, thank, thank you to my wife and my daughter who uh, we struggled to get these to work yesterday. And I'm not sure how they will today, but we're gonna see. Solomon said the first category is wisdom. There are people who sit in this seat of wisdom. And I bet like you, many of us have sat in the seat at times in our life. We have sat in the wise seat where we've looked and we've had a decision facing us. And we said, you know, in light of what I've been through in my past, what's the wise thing to do today? In light of, of where I am at my life now, what's the wise thing to do? And in light of what I want in the future, what's the wise thing for me to do? Solomon says the person who sits in this seat, they ask those questions. They look backwards. They look at where they are today. They look forward and they ask, what's the wise thing for me to do? And then Solomon does something that is so masterfully done. He compares the person who sits over here. I don't like that. I don't know if y'all can see it. I'm going to pull it off because like, I'm ADHD about that. <laughs> 
He says, he compares wisdom over here or the wise person to three different categories of people on this side. And what we said last week is these categories over here may offend you. I mean, because they are a little bit offensive. But if you get offended, I asked you last week, I'm going to ask you today, don't be offended at me. If you want to yell at somebody, yell at Solomon in your car. If you want to write an email to somebody, email Solomon. But remember, they're Solomon's words, not my words. The first person that we mentioned last week, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on him, is the simple person. The simple person. And I bet a lot of you have sat in the seat of the simple person as well. And I'm going to tell you that I have sat here before. And I've sat here because I've been young before. So if any of you have ever been young before, you have sat here. If any of you are 30 or 35 or 40 and you have people in your life who say, you know, you never grew up, maybe you're still sitting in this seat today. (laughs) The simple person lacks something that older people generally get, and that something is experience. The simple person lacks experience. It's not that they're seeking to be unwise, it's just that they don't know everything yet. They're not on their second or third marriage. They've not had enough credit cards that they're so far in debt that they can't figure their way out. They haven't had to split up their time between an ex-spouse because of a situation they got themselves into. Sometimes we call them naive people or clueless. (coughs) And they say things. They say things like, When wisdom over here, because this is where we know wisdom calls out and says, watch that. Should you do that? The person who sits in this seat, you know them because they say things like, well, everybody's doing it. Well, well, of course you should go do it if everybody's doing it. Did your mom or dad ever tell you, well, if everybody jumped off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff? I mean, I remember those words coming out, but that's what the simple person says. So if you find yourself saying, everybody's doing it, mom and dad, just looking, you know, well, maybe I'm a little bit. Simple. (laughs) Or you say this, I can handle it. I can handle it. I mean, I know you didn't handle it very well, and my neighbor didn't handle it very well, and I've got three friends who we don't even want to mention them. They didn't handle it very well, but I can handle it because I'm special. I can do that. That's what the simple person says. And right now, wisdom looks to the simple person and says, you have a unique opportunity. You have the opportunity to get it right on the front end if you would listen to those who have been through what you're facing before, if you would ask your heavenly father for wisdom, and if you would sometimes wait until you've had more experience in your life. You have the opportunity, wisdom says, to be both young and to be wise at the very same time. Now the next one, we get a little bit more offensive Because Solomon says the next category that he goes to is called the fool. Now that's kind of harsh, isn't it? (laughs) Again, if you have a letter to write, Solomon is your man to write it to. (laughs) And you know what? I will sit, maybe I should just bring this up right here. I will sit right here in the seat of the fool because I have sat here before. I have sat here before. Have, you, have any of you ever made a decision that you made the decision knowing that the outcome could be bad? Have you ever decided to do something that you think, you know, I've done this before and it didn't work out so well, but I think I'm going to do it again. Then Solomon says, you have sat in this seat before. In fact, I had someone, and I had a stress ball up here with me, and I don't know what I did with it. It's probably rolling around under one of y'all's seats. But uh, I had somebody call me a fool one time. It was, uh, um, it was, uh, I was giving blood, let me say, you know, and I I had a needle in my arm over here. Uh, The church that we attended before we came here, they had a big blood drive in their gym. And so I would give blood about every three months, however often they came around. And I guess my blood wasn't coming out fast enough because I had my arm up here. And uh, she comes around and she says, man, it's been 15 minutes. You're not, you don't have a lot in there. You know, if you don't get, a, if you don't get any more out, we're not going to be able to take your blood. So she hands me this little squeezy ball. And so I take it and she says, what I want you to do, 
I want you to count to five and then squeeze it. Count to five and squeeze it. And, and she said, let's see if it comes out a little bit quicker. So I took the ball in this hand, mind you, I'm giving blood in this hand. <laughs> and I went one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Few minutes later, she comes back around and she yelled at that gym. She went, fool! <laughs> Put that ball in the other hand! I thought, oh, I knew there was a trick to this. Now, now, mind you, mind you, that was probably more the simple person because the, the definition of the fool is the fool knows, but he doesn't care. Well, I actually cared because I wanted my blood to come out, but I got fault called a fool, so I thought maybe it makes for a good story anyway. <laughs> but the fool knows, and, that, and that's really the difference. That's the difference between the simple person and the foolish person. The fool knows, but the fool doesn't care. The fool says things like, you know, that's not going to hurt me. When wisdom looks to the fool and says, don't you know what that's going to do to your family? The fool says, yeah, but I don't care. You think it doesn't happen? I met with a person not long ago. Met with a dad. So discouraging. I said, I said, do you know what that's going to do to your kids, what you're thinking about doing? And his exact words to me were, yeah, but I don't care. He said, they'll get over it. Solomon says that type of person is a foolish person. So you know what happened last time and you're going to go there anyway. Yeah, you know, I don't care. I mean, look, there's a warning written right on the side of the box and you're going to do it anyway. Yeah, because, you know, I like it. I like it. I don't care. It's not good for your marriage. I know. I don't care. You know, I'm playing the part of the mm, up there. You know, that's a bad financial decision. Yeah, I know. But you know what? I don't care. Wait, 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 wait. Everyone who made that decision before, I know. Everyone who invested in that before, I know. Everyone who went down that path before, I know. And you're going to do it anyway? And the person who sits in this chair says, yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. Because Solomon says, if this is you, you're foolish. And some of you hear me even saying that, and you're like, I don't care. <laughs> Maybe that says something to you. But here's what Solomon says. Look at this. Solomon says to that person... He, he, he describes it in words that are a little bit harsh. He said, as a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. Proverbs 26, 11, picture that. In fact, I had a picture for that and it's back there, but I decided not to show it to you because it is yuck. And if you were going anywhere for lunch today, you would not be going anywhere for lunch after that. But, but uh, Solomon says, I want you to picture something so ugly that if you are the person that says, yeah, I know the consequences. Yeah, I know what's going to happen. Yeah, I know what happened to everybody else. And you choose to do it anyway. He said, you're not like, wow, everybody should look at you and congratulate you. He said, no, you are like a dog who throws up and then turns around and licks what he throws up. You mean last time, last time when you did that, you wrecked the car. I know, I know. Last time when you did that, you were sick for three days. I know, I know. Wisdom hollers out over there to our students and says, last time you did that, you went too far. And the student says, I know, but I want this time. He was so cute. That's why I did it. He was it's like he was adorable and wisdom calls out and says he lives in his mother's basement and the person over here and the person over here says I know I can live in the basement have you seen it he's fixed it up really nice and over here wisdom calls out and says he doesn't have a job she says I'm going to college I can do it he says if that's you I don't want to say it we say, oh, it's fun, it's a blast. Solomon says, no, it's a dog doing a doggy thing. <laughs> and now no one wants to go to lunch, so I can speak forever. So anyway, <laughs> and let me tell you, it's easy to see this in other people, isn't it? It's easy to look at someone else and say, hey, I see that in you. That's a bad decision. You're headed down a wrong road. But I want each of us to look at ourselves and say, you know what? If there is a point in my life or a part of my life where I know the consequences and I know what something has brought and I just don't do it, Solomon says, man, you need to look inward. And maybe the last thing I want to say about the fool is this. 
The fool a lot of times will say, it's my body, it's my life, it's my whatever. I'm not hurting anyone else. One thing you need to know is this, that is a lie. Because the fool not only hurts themselves, the fool hurts everyone around them. Solomon, in Proverbs 13, 20 says, walk with the wise and become wise, but a companion of fools, a companion of the person who does this, the mother of, the father of, the friend of, the employee of, will suffer harm. I know a lady, she comes here. We have been friends since we were in college. She visits her brother. In fact, she goes and picks up her mother. And she takes her mother to see her brother who is in prison, who has been there 25 years, not because he sold drugs, not because he owned a gun, not because he brought a gun or pulled out a gun, but because he was with someone who did. And students, if your mom and dad freak out or stress over your friends, <laughs> it's not so much because they distrust you. And it's not even that they distrust them so much. It's because they know that they can raise the wisest child in the world. But all it takes is one person to get you going the wrong direction. So again, wisdom would say to you, listen, listen, listen. And then the last person, because we got an end that we're going to talk about. And there are not a lot of these here. In fact, these people, most of the time, they don't even come to church. They're the mocker. And I would sit there, but I'm not going to sit there because it is one of these cat. I've sat in all three of these other ones, but I don't think I've ever sat here. The mocker, some of your versions will even say scoffer. That's the person who makes fun of people who want to do the right thing. The mocker is the one, they know the difference between right and wrong. They don't care about the difference between right and wrong. And they're going to make fun of you for choosing the right thing to do. They're going to insult you. They're going to call you names. They're not going to let you into their club. They're going to say things like, oh, scaredy cat. <laughs> oh, what's that? You don't want to go over here with us? Afraid somebody's going to find out? Jesus freak. Those are those type of people that are over there. And Solomon says, when you run into someone like the mocker, it's very hard. Solomon says, not only they don't know the difference between right and wrong, they don't care. They're going to try to bring you down. Proverbs 9, 7, he says, whoever corrects a mocker invites insult. He said, if you try to go to one of these people and you try to reason with them, he said, you can't even reason with them because they're going to call you names. They're going to call you out. They're not going to let you talk. And if you're married to one, oh. Or if you work for one, oh. It's tough. And Solomon will go on and he said this right at the end. He says, if you correct, and he's talking to wisdom. He says, if wisdom corrects the simple, the simple will generally go, uh, I don't understand. But time, time and experience will bring the simple around. He says, if wisdom tries to correct the fool, the fool will just go, I don't care. I don't care. But they will care one day. You know when they'll care? They'll care when they get to the bottom of their ladder and they realize they want the relationship that they threw away. They'll care when their kids don't want to come back to their house anymore. They'll care when they left a job that they can't get back but would wish and they find themselves in financial states. He says, the fool will come around, but, it, but unlike the simple who it just takes time and experience, the fool has to have a tragedy happen. And then he goes on, he says, in the mocker, he says, good luck with the mocker. If that's you, he says, there's little chance that you will turn around at all. Not impossible, but it's actually very hard. So what we're going to do in closing, and in fact, maybe I don't know if I should go ahead and invite the praise team and the band back up here. They can just kind of stand in the background for a minute because I know we're kind of pressed for time this morning. And we want to, to go through communion. If you're one of the people serving communion, go ahead and get in place right now. That would be a, a good thing to do. I'm just going to read them because we've not read the text of this. I'm going to read through Proverbs chapter 1. And what you're going to see is in red, you're going to see the words of wisdom. 
And in yellow, you're going to see the words of the simple, the fool, and the mocker come up before you. And what Solomon does in this, he masterfully does, he's not talking about God. He's saying wisdom, and he personifies wisdom as a woman. And he's going to talk about wisdom and how she addresses these three. So here we go. Alana's going to have them on the screen, and we're going to go. So he says, wisdom, out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She walks through the streets. She raises her voice in the public square. On top of the wall, she cries out at the city gate. She makes her speech. And what she says is this. How long will you who are simple? How long will you continue your simple ways? How long will you who are mockers? How long will you delight in your mockery and fools and not even wanting to know and saying, I don't care, I don't care. And then wisdom says this. She says, wisdom stops and says, repent. Wisdom stands here and looks at the people who sit in those seats and says, turn around at my rebuke. Listen to what wisdom says, because if you do, I make you a promise. If you listen to the words of wisdom, I, wisdom, will pour out my thoughts to you. I, wisdom, will make known to you my teachings. He goes on and says, but to the one who doesn't listen, if you sit in those seats long enough, he says, if you refuse to listen when wisdom calls out, no one pays attention. When I stretch out my hand, since you disregard my advice and do not accept my rebuke or do not accept my consequences, I in turn will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. And he's not saying that God does that. He's saying that wisdom does that. He's saying that there will come a day when you will seek what wisdom had. And when you don't have it, you will be over here and it will be like looking and, and wisdom will be like, ha oh. ha. Just you're living with the consequences now. That's just what happened. It's set in motion because there are certain consequences to living and sitting in these seats too long. He goes on and says, when calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, and when distress and trouble overwhelm you, then, he says, there will come a point when all of these people will want to turn around. Then you will call out to me, but I won't answer. And he's not saying that I'm just ignoring you. He's just saying that you will have to reap the consequences of what you sow. It is a process of sowing and reaping and sowing and reaping that if you sit here long enough and you walk out on your family and you make a choice like that, there will come a day when you will want them back, but you may not be able to get them back because it's up to somebody else then. There will come a chore time when if you sit in these chairs long enough and you think, well, I just did anything with my body and I went anyway and I did whatever I wanted to do. There may come a time when you will wish and you will want a counselor and you'll want a pastor and you'll want somebody to come back and say, hey, could you change it? Could you make it different? And all that wisdom will do at that point is say, no, I can't change it. I can't make it different. I can't make it right for you anymore. The only thing in the church, this is where we get to step up to the plate and all the story. The only thing I can do is come take your hand and try to walk you through it and say it's happened. Let me tell you, I didn't plan on saying this, but I see Jennifer Hart sitting right over here, worked at the Cumberland Crisis Pregnancy Center for years and years and years. And there is not a thing she can do when somebody comes at that center to change their situation. She can only say to them, I've sat in these seats before. And I'm going to invite you to come over here and sit in this seat with me. And we can't take away all the consequences, but what we can do is figure out maybe how to do it a little bit better. We can walk with you and we can get you through this point in life. And guess what? If you've sat there, there will come a time when you may be able to sit here and as the Hebrew writer said, help someone else out who finally decides to get out of one of these seats. So what I want to say to you this morning before I close is this. If you sit in one of those seats, if that's you, get up, get up. <laughs> if you hear this message today, it's because God has given you a unique opportunity to just get up and get in the other seat or find someone and say, you know what? I've sat there. Because if you read the rest of this chapter, what you discover is this. If you sit there long enough, wisdom says, you won't even be able to hear my voice. 
You'll hear wise words, but you won't internalize them. If you turn away forever, but let me just go to the end because I love how he says, verse 32, if you can find it. I know I skipped, Alana. <laughs> verse, I think, all the way down to 32. He says, but whoever listens to me, again, that's wisdom talking. He said, whoever listens to me, come on, I'm giving you another chance. I'm giving you another chance. Whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. You know what he's saying? If you sit in this seat long enough, you won't have to go through life worrying, who's going to find out? You won't have to go through life worrying, are they going to think bad of me? What's going to happen when she finds out or, or if my boss knows I did this? If you sit in the seat of wisdom, you can actually live a life that's free of worry, that's free of stress and free of harm. So hey, as we continue the series next week, there is a reason we wanted to go through this. At every decision, at every opportunity, at every turn, ask the question. In light of my past, in light of who I am today, and in light of what I want out there in my future, what's the wise thing? Not for everybody. What's the wise thing for me to do? And my prayer is that wherever that road takes you, that you have the wisdom to know it and the courage to follow it. Mm -hmm.